you are in for a treat today because my little six month old baby girl starts solids. So today I'm going to show you exactly what her very first moment eating food is like. I'm also going to show you why the first food that she is going to actually have is not going to be rice cereal. I know that's a pretty popular thing, but I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna explain why. This is my fourth child. I had four kids in, in less than seven years. <laughs> I'm going to share with you what baby led weaning is versus like pureeing the baby food. And I also am gonna tell you guys about like digestion in general, baby digestion specifically, and some of the nutrients. And then there's going to be a part two to this video where I'm gonna show you exactly how I prepare the food and how I store the baby food. So definitely hit that thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you are new. My name is Brittany Kelly, I'm a mom of four. Join the family. Now let's feed this baby. So if you're watching this video, I'm gonna assume that you're human <laughs> and that you eat food because you are a heterotrophic organism. So we know that in digestion, we use enzymes to help us break down our food. The reason we need to break down our food is because we need to get the vitamins and nutrients that are in our foods to be absorbed into our body. That absorption takes place in the small intestines, but on the way to get to the small intestines, we have various areas where food is broken down. We have the mouth, where you have your saliva, and of course your teeth, babies don't have that. So in your saliva, you actually have an enzyme called amylase that breaks down starches, so your carbohydrates. And then also when you go into the stomach, you have enzymes such as pepsin that breaks down protein, and then you also have bile, and enzymes specifically made to break down fat. So when we look at our foods, we think of them in terms of the macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, or lipids, and protein. So that protein has those amino acids that we need as our building blocks. So we need to look at the entire picture when we're talking about baby food and introducing them to solids because in that we want to make sure that we are touching each of these macronutrients in their introduction. We know that the baby's brain is 60% fat and is rapidly growing. So we definitely wanna make sure to have fat in their baby's diet as well as the body uses glucose as energy so we need the glucose from sugars carbohydrates and all of these things are really important so we definitely don't want to keep anything out or exclude anything we kind of want to have a broad picture including fiber in their diet is also really important too even though fiber is not absorbed it plays a critical part in our digestion so things such as leafy greens and such are really good for babies to have but they can't chew them right they don't have the teeth they don't have those molars so the one of the things that you can do in order to incorporate that type of food is to puree their baby food but I'm gonna talk about that in another video and actually how I prepare all of these things but for now let's just know that we need to puree it if we want them to eat something like a leafy green otherwise if you're doing baby let weaning that's gonna be a little bit difficult for them to really chew on if they don't have any teeth which most six month olds don't have molars. <laughs> so baby digestion in general is usually suggested to let the baby start their first food when they're around six months old. This is because babies actually don't have a lot of digestive enzymes like amylase when they are little babies before they're about four to six months old then you start to see those enzymes start to come into play which is why it's important to first feed your baby exclusively milk before they are age four to six months old because their bodies just don't have the type of enzymes it needs to even break down that food and actually it takes a while for them to have a significant amount of amylase to break down the carbohydrates you actually tend to get that as you grow older so it's important to keep that in mind when you are selecting their first foods to definitely make sure they have a variety of those macronutrients because if it's all carbohydrates and they don't have the enzymes to really break it down it can be a little bit stressful on their system so you definitely want to have 
you know, a nice variety. So solid readiness can look like a couple things. Your baby can show interest in food. That could be a sign. It also might not be a sign because, you know, babies tend to be interested in pretty much everything that we do. So that just may be a general interest in what you do. So I personally don't take that as a sign they're ready to eat just because they're watching me eat or they want to grab what I'm eating. If I were putting makeup on, they would want to grab my makeup brush <laughs> and put it in their mouths. They're just really interested in using their mouths to sense the world. So for me, that's not really a readiness for solids cue, but I know a lot of other moms use that as a cue. However, the unassisted sitting milestone is actually important to me as a solid indicator that they are ready for eating food because they're able to sit up and they are able to let gravity help them in their digestive process. Remember, this is brand new to their system when it comes to anything outside of milk. So you just wanna make sure that it's easy. So being able to sit and, and be grounded to me is a great solid food readiness indicator as well as being at least four to six months old. Definitely another thing you can use is your pediatrician to help you decide and understand when your baby is ready. Remember, none of these videos are to be taken as medical advice or replacing your provider's advice. Only you and your provider actually know your entire situation. So I'm just gonna share with you my personal experiences, my research, my knowledge, and you can go out and definitely make these decisions with your providers. So I wanted to show you this really, really helpful tool when it comes to being prepared in case of any choking hazards. But I'm glad I, mean, I'm glad I went to, sh to show you because I've just found out that mine is broken. Like what if somebody has broken it? I'm gonna have to get another one. It's completely cracked. This is called the de-choker and you just place it over the mouth and pull back and this thing it has the instructions right on it so you always know what to do in case of an emergency um, it comes in like child and then adult sizes so i have an adult size this is a child size uh, apparently i need a new one uh, thank god i've never had to use it but i definitely wanted to share this with other parents you know you're looking for something to just have that extra security now, another great thing about babies starting their solids is that it actually is a part of their development mentally. Like I said earlier, the mouth is a very, very like sensitive place when it comes to information input into the brain. It takes up a significant amount of area in the brain when it comes to their the cells for processing all the information coming from the mouth, which is why babies like to use their mouths to explore their environment. So food actually gives you an opportunity for them to have this sensory input. They can have different textures. They can have different temperatures, not too hot, of course, and not too cold, but they can. you can kind of vary the temperature a bit. I feel like it's a great opportunity to incorporate sign language. That's a bonus for me. It's so important to have them explore and understand eating food. I know there's a saying that goes, food before one is just for fun. Uh, eh. It's, it's, it's more than fun, right? It's a, it's a cute saying because it rhymes, but beyond it rhyming, it's not 100% true. There is a point to food prior to one year old. And for me, I had this horrible experience. I can talk about it more in depth in another video if you want me to comment down below, but my oldest daughter who is five years old, did not eat solid foods. She couldn't digest it until she was 15 months old. And I was really, really concerned. We went to the GI. I tried all different types of things, but she just couldn't digest anything other than breast milk until she was 15 months old. Thank you, God, that she likes to eat everything. She's healthy. Uh, she's brilliant she speaks three languages so everything worked out just fine but 
you know, as a mom, of course, I was very concerned about her not being able to have the sensory part of eating food and, of course, uh, developing her craving centers, which are most adaptable when the baby is between 6 and 12 months old. So I was a little concerned, but I can tell you from my personal experience that if you do have a child like that, that it can be okay. Just definitely make sure you have your you know pediatrician know what's going on maybe they might send you to a specialist but i definitely can share my personal experience okay so let's talk baby led weaning what is that basically it's where the baby can actually hold and pull the food themselves and try to chew or try to suck on it themselves so you really aren't pureeing in that method you're actually you know cutting things into smaller slices where they can actually hand hold it and put it to their mouths um, they can chew they they kind of get more chunks and bites you want to pick things that are really really soft that they're able to actually you know chew onto it like a wedge of, of a cooked potato or a, you know some type of french fry style thing when it comes to pureeing baby food you actually are taking something that they would have a hard time trying to actually break down in their mouths and swallow and you're kind of giving them a little bit more food than with the baby led weaning because they aren't really able to break it down as well as pureed food so you're taking something like an apple or a pear or anything like that and you're putting it into a blender or a food processor you're making it very very smooth a lot of times with the puree what i like to do and many other moms is add uh, milk to it so add your formula or add your breast milk depending on which things you were using before your baby started eating solids and you can make a nice consistency and you can feed that to them as well. Personally, I like to do a little bit of both. I think baby led weaning is very stimulatory for the babies. They get to play with their hands and their mouths and, and taste different textures of food like an avocado texturally feels different than an apple. But I also like making sure that they are getting in those calories because this is the start of their weaning process from, you know, breastfeeding or eat, or drinking formula. My children breastfed, all of them breastfed, and breastfeeding is really time consuming. So I do want them to eventually uh, go over into being weaned, but it takes time. It's not fast. Their main source of nutrients is still from their formula or breast milk so my children normally were i breastfed them about two years on average for all the kids my fourth one i'm thinking that i'm going to be doing the same thing but by the time they were one our breastfeeding sessions were down to about three a day so that's really important and i'm keeping that in mind at six months that i have about six months until they are eating are breastfeeding less now that applies to everyone except my oldest daughter she breastfed exclusively until she was 15 months old i like to do both i think that really helps me achieve two goals with the baby their independence and in learning how to eat and also in my independence from breastfeeding at some point in the future okay so i want to tell you about why i'm choosing not to use rice cereal now of course when it comes to first foods or even food in general for babies for adults it is a tricky subject because you know culturally we are different in terms of what we eat you know around the world and also uh, it can just be sensitive each family can have their own traditions as well so we want to keep that in mind and be sensitive to those things when people are discussing food I know some people are vegan I've been vegan in my life before some people are pescatarian or what have keto all these things so just make sure that you are aligning your baby's overall goals you know as far as getting nutrients and and gaining independence but of course at the end of the day it is up to each and every single parent to choose what makes sense for their baby 
So with that said, <laughs> I choose not to start with rice cereal for a couple of reasons. Number one, rice does have arsenic and if you consume it excessively, it can have a negative effect on the baby's immune system. So it's not to where you can't have it at all and it's going to you know, be a problem if they take a little bit, it's fine. But, you know, if they're having rice cereal every single day, every single meal, you know, that could be problematic. One of the ways to remove arsenic from rice or rice cereal is by soaking it first in water to make sure that you're removing some of that arsenic. And also, brown rice cereal has more arsenic in it than white rice cereal, so keep those things in mind. But one of the things that rice cereal has that's so important is that it is fortified with iron however this particular iron is actually non heme iron which is a little bit harder for us to digest heme iron is easier for us to digest and that comes from animal products like meats like fish and and poultry I'm gonna talk about that more in a second but so that's one of the things you want to consider is making sure that your baby is getting a good source of iron as well and there are other things that you can choose that has iron, that have iron in it beans have it as well leafy greens has a ha, has a little bit but again there's heme and then there's non heme and one is more absorbable than the other but do both I do both <laughs> so for that reason I'm actually choosing to start Dove my baby girl who's six months old with her first solid being salmon caviar so salmon roe the reason why I'm choosing this food is for several reasons it's super nutritious it has omega-3s so that's a healthy fat, which is necessary for the brain development of a child. And like I mentioned before, iron is in fish. It has protein, and in fact it has all nine essential amino acids. It's a great starter food, so that's gonna be one of her first, first foods that she's ever gonna taste, and you're gonna see her taste that today, and we're gonna see her reaction. Some other foods that I plan to have her try within her first week of trying foods, sweet potatoes, an avocado and a pear of course bananas are also on the list and apples and then the last thing that is on the list that's a little funny too a little, a little different is chicken liver chicken liver actually has a lot of iron it also has a lot of vitamin a so you don't want to um, give it too often vitamin a is so important in eye development and skin and the immune system however if you eat it in large quantities just like I said with the rice cereal with the arsenic if you have it in large quantities it can be pretty toxic and not good for you so we always want to be mindful of the quantity and the amount and the quality of food that we are providing to our children baby girl's chair is all set up so I'm gonna go get her she's downstairs with Jeremy and the kids but um, I just wanted to show you some of the things I'm gonna have on hand. Have this burping cloth, of course, a bib, and then she has a small bowl and she'll have a small little spoon. But there are uh, tons of other things that you can also have on hand that are helpful to preparing baby food, storing baby food, making baby food more consistently. So let me know in the comment section below if you want me to do a video specifically about baby food gear and what you need to have prepared. All right, it's time, it's the big moment. Hey Mookie, you ready for your first food? Dove, eat time. Eat, eat, it's food, eat. You wanna see what that is? What, what's that, what's that? I give her one little bite. <gasps> open, 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 open. Come on, come on, try it. What's that, what is that? What's that? What is that, you wanna touch it? Go ahead, touch it. Ready? Boop, boop, boop. She ain't trying to eat anything. Come on, come on. There you go. <laughs> Spit it back out. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't taste like breast milk. Let's see if you'll eat it. Will you eat it? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna try again? 
Ready? Say ah, eat. Mmm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Maybe you'll try the pear. Look at Mama. Say to oh. She opened her mouth. <laughs> no. No, not really feeling that. And ready? Say ah. Oh. So thank you guys for joining us in this video documenting Dove's huge, huge milestone. It's a big moment in her life and I'm so glad we got to share it with you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.